Well, hello there, and welcome to another Let's Code session. Uh, so again, same format like last week. We are just gonna hack on some stuff that I would uh, otherwise prepare on my own anyway. And you're welcome to uh, just join and watch and comment and uh, maybe uh, think together with me while I'm uh, trying to solve some uh, problems. So actually my plan was to hack on test containers again. So basically continue what we did last week by trying to build up a, a test environment for my coffee shop project. Um, that I'm gonna fire up with test containers. So it actually uh, worked already uh, at the end of uh, last week's coding session that we used test containers to fire up three Docker containers. And um, yeah, we're gonna continue on that. And actually I have another way how I run this project with this development mode of Quarkus that is gonna be super interesting to see whether that's gonna work with test containers. So I'm excited about that. And I, yeah, I hope you're all uh, doing well. So I um, say hi in the chat, please. Hi, Sergey. Super cool that you can join. And thanks a lot for your uh, um, feedback last time already. So um, I, yeah, I was lucky to get some feedback from uh, my friends from Test Containers. So this is what we looked at uh, last time. This was this article by Sergey, how to do this basically with Java. And then I got uh, comments from uh, both Kevin and, and Sergey what to what I should do better ne uh, like, uh, next uh, next time. So basically using the Fluent API. Maybe if you joined last uh, last time, I was struggling a little bit which one uh, to to use. So the Fluent API with the with methods that works better apparently. And uh, we did the depends on, which doesn't even make sense. So apparently that is not um, taken into account how we did it. So it was uh, basically what we did here with our three containers, our coffee shop, barista and um, the database. And basically our coffee shop depends on the other two. But uh, apparently if we don't use a startable steep, steep start, but do this one, it also kind of works because it's blocking, but that is not the point because then we don't have to set uh, this dependency. So please Sergey, cor correct me if I got this wrong, but um, basically instead of doing it like this, um, if I understand that correctly, we do it in, in a different way that we basically say, well, um, startables or something like this dot and then it would be deep start of all of our containers which would be the coffee shop um, the coffee shop database and the barista in our case which then apparently takes these dependencies into consideration so um, let's see whether this works actually and last time well it already worked to build up uh, the containers and now let me see if actually there's something running here. No. So we have the Docker containers that I want to run uh, again. And I run this main method. So that's literally the same code that I wrote uh, last time. I didn't touch it. So I wanted to do this together with you. And once my IDE wakes up, then we'll be able uh, to do this um, to continue that. So I hope you're all doing well. Um, actually, by the way, look what... Um, arrived in the mail today. This one, this uh, hoodie, actually where the uh, Neo4j folks were kind enough to send me one because I spoke on their conference. So it was like a speaker present for um, the Nodes uh, conference that I gave a virtual uh, presentation. Um, so I like it. And it says uh, graphs are everywhere. I don't know if you can read it here. And fun fact, this is actually not a gray color. You probably see it as gray, but it's supposed to be green. But because of my green screen, it's actually going to so I'm half transparent now, if you can see the background. <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, back to containers. So I am now running, yes, three containers or actually four with the test containers one again. And this seems to work. Um, it seemed to, well, I mean, last time it uh, worked as well. Um, it uh, seemed to uh, start them up uh, properly. What I would actually like to do in these cases, what I like to do sometimes just in order that I get the understanding uh, correct is to have some arbitrary uh, weights here somewhere to really see if it actually waits for the dependencies or if it's just like, uh, you know, lucky accident that they you know, all just start up because if at some point the database is slower than my application, then it would uh, it might uh, fail for some reason. So if I say, well, the coffee shop uh, here and um, yeah, that starts up 
here as well. And last time I did the dirty hack. I know that the test container folks don't like that, but uh, I don't care too much. Um, I want uh, actually proper um, fixed uh, po ports here so I can say well localhost 8001 and I know that's going to be uh, localhost 8001 and sorry I should share my screen and um, then I can actually uh, run this orders and now that should work and now if I like last time I think I was creating some some coffee order here something like espresso was it I think uh, espresso and some origin then this should work as well that actually uh, Colombia I think Colombia and if I properly type some JSON that that should work yes so they are in the system great and then I will run my uh, proper system test there as well to, uh, to just see whether it still works um, what I did before I looked into the logs while I wasn't sharing my screen so this one is normal this exception why because it talks to the barista and the barista is not properly set up why? Because it is a wiremark. It's not the actual barista. It is a wiremark and I have to set it up, uh, which I do as part of my system test, but not in the command line. So that's normal. But the rest, um, the applications could start up and it could connect to the database, what you see here, and the database would contain uh, these orders. So that works. Um, in the chat, it is completable future. Make sure to join on the result. Ah, okay, it is computable future. That is nice start is yes that's correct so now also now I fixed like last time my maven dependency were wrong here uh, in the IDE so it had the wrong um, uh, the wrong sources so if that happens to you of course there's the cure all solution just delete your maven repository um, the local one or actually here I deleted everything for test containers so and build again and then it um, uh, worked okay so join to wait for the result and then well here I'm waiting for 200 seconds I actually have to find a better solution for that anyway uh, like wait for um, enter input or something like that but yeah now they're already gone now I can start them again and then it should hopefully work as well we're not seeing the screen yes now you do as long as you understand the invocations use fixed port is okay okay yeah i'm happy um yes actually in my setup it is always easier um well in such a uh, setup it is uh, easier for me to go with that rather than to also build uh, the way around to get uh, the port in the first place because usually i use such a script or su such a mechanism as a um as a combination in a bigger hole and then it is easier just to rely you know that is 8001 8002 and so on okay yes so last time yes we had the log consumer which shows that here it works because it uh, in the beginning there's no exception it immediately um, displays that I'm gonna access the database which is good and I can post some coffee and then this works okay great and now the next thing was to execute my system test to basically say, well, go to the barista system here as well and set it up properly and to create and verify my coffee order. So that is the other thing that I want to have because now you see the fast feedback. It uh, immediately works because it connects to the running system and it also, I think, connects the and sets up the barista system, which we can do here. Um, we can stack, uh, check for the status updates, which actually now talks to the barista system. So it relies that my container, the barista container, is a wire mock. And this takes a few more seconds because it goes like a ping pong back and forth. And then it should display, yeah, orders like in a forward status. So that's cool. And that works already. And one thing I just remembered what I did last time. I had a monitor for my keys because people ask for it which which weird keys i'm pressing when using my ide with my vim setting there we go okay so what i wanted actually to do this time um was to integrate something like this so that's already cool because then i can um have um, a java process that just builds up everything here right so i can define in java how that's supposed to look like and all of these dependencies so that's nice um 
And now I want to integrate this with uh, the Quarkus development mode because what I just did basically started a container that is already being built before because I say, well, use this coffee shop image, whatever that is, and I have to build it in the first place. And I, if I change something, I have to redeploy and that takes a lot, uh, long time. So that's why Quarkus has this cool development mode, which also, I actually recorded a video about that, um, works in a uh, in a container so this is basically what i'm doing here in case you're interested i can actually point you quarkus remote dev mode i can point you to a blog post here how this works in docker containers in general so this is basically what i'm doing there with docker run and so on and so forth and um you you have to change the the package type of your quarkus application which is kind of interesting but then it works really well um, which is what i'm doing here uh, basically and then I want to do this to say, well, the two other containers, they're the same. And now that's getting interesting because first of all, I build it from a Docker file. I know that test containers can do that, right? And then I want to run this a little bit differently with some, you know, other ports. Uh, I also want to test the uh, debug port and then we see how that works. Um, by the way, you can remove the generics warnings and use lambdas by using generic container. Okay. Is it, wait a second, that's a good point. Ah, yes, of course it is a, that's why it was complaining, right? It's like generic container of something. Not like this, yes, no, maybe, yeah. And what is this? Something, Postgres container, okay. It also has a type that's in, is it still a warning? Yes. What is it, something of, okay, interesting. Well, nicer, thanks. That's good. Okay, so what I would like to do, I would actually start a container from that I uh, built on demand from uh, from an image. So I know I have to know that my application needs to be built, like the Java application. And then I looked into this, um, creating images on the fly. So I basically say, please go there and then use use that image on the fly, build it on the fly. Where also now, and that's the uh, the different thing that I want to do with uh, with Quarkus that I tell um, to uh, to build it a little bit differently. So I want to pass uh, like a, um, a system property and then build it from uh, from a um, development mode Docker file, which is here. So it basically, um, you know, sets up some some stuff differently. So this remote that works. Um, and yeah, let's see. So first of all, I have to actually build my application in another way. I probably have to find a better way for that as well. But let's see. Um, that's one thing I want to go for my coffee shop. And then I say Maven package, basically this. Now, some people might say you don't have to use Maven clean package. Actually, I do in this case, because um, I want to like wipe everything from before and build my application differently. So this builds my um, uh, Quarkus application specifically in, in a mode where I can do this remote dev stuff. And then what I basically want to do, I want to take this Docker file and have my, um, and have my uh, test container built um, like on, on the fly. Okay, I have no clue whether this works. Let's see, coffee shop, new generic container. Basically the same way what is done here. New generic container from new image from Docker file. Okay, interesting. Let's see. Test on the fly image. Docker image name, yes. And the Docker image name will be not coffee shop, but new Docker image from no Docker image from Docker file. Yes, image from Docker file. Docker image Docker image name, okay, coffee shop with or something with image from file my short-term memory is so bad like really when i read something i go switch back the window and what was it again with with file from string um with file from class path uh i want file from string i don't know what i want with file from file from file file from where is it actually where am i uh coffee shop this is the system test project and this image will be here with coffee shop uh, good question. Where, which path is it? Does it say in which path I am? Basically from which um, I'm executing this from that project. So I guess I'm either in this path or I'm in the path target classes. I guess, I don't know. 
Um, keep in mind that in most cases you don't need to build an image and can just mount a jar into the container. No, in this case I... Good question. I think I have to. Hmm. That's a good point. From Sega in the chat. Can I mount this into... Well, I could. I could swap it actually. Yes, I could build all of that before. Well, no, I can't because uh, of this one. Uh, potentially I can, but then I would need to be sure that my libraries are the same because I do the thin, war, um, uh, thin jar approach where the libraries of my app are added here. And potentially it would work if I swap it afterwards, but if I make some library changes, I have to build my image again. Um, so I would like for consistency, I would like to try out this one. I would like to try out the way from the uh, with the file. Okay, so adds a tarball, yes. Now it would be interesting from which I could basically say, oh. Okay, so this is a path, string path in the file. So path uh, here, that's Docker file, that's okay. Then it, I guess it, it adds it to the Docker uh, build context. And then, oh, okay, file, that's good. Can I say paths get something like that? Um, I have no clue which path it takes. Where where am I in this case? Does it run it? Probably depends on the IDE. If it runs in the if it runs it in the current directory or target classes, um, it looks like something you can do at runtime. Uh, Sergey, maybe you know this. And in, in which the um, in which environment I basically run on which path uh, where I am basically. What I would now do just na uh, naively is to try it out uh, to say Docker file something here. Uh, and I just see where um, where my paths is something like paths get uh, I don't know dot uh, to absolute path and then print. <laughs> that's that's what I would now naively do. So let's try this because this will be wrong if I say Docker file def. It's it, that's definitely not the correct um, environment, not the correct um, directory. But just to know, I would actually see where I am and then say okay path slash Docker file. Okay, coffee testing. That's good. Then I can say, uh -huh, it probably runs it in this environment. Okay, whatever. Then I can say not slash but dot slash. Yeah, this won't work. I know. Uh, coffee shop Docker file dev. Okay, let's see. With file. Okay, that's the first file. That's my Docker file, and then another file with file build args Docker file. Ah, with Docker file. Oh, even better. With Docker file. Yes. Now with file from file from class path from path. Ah, file from path. Also good. File from path. And I can get rid of this there. But now that's not the Docker file. What I need is I think the jar. Oh yeah, the whole Okay, let's see if this works. I need the whole direct. Well, I basically need all of that because this is supposed to be added to my build context, right? I say this should be under target and then I need to add all of these four lines as well into my build target. I have no clue. I, so I think how this works like like a remote Docker build that I say my build context is uh, usually the current directory, the dot directory in, in Docker that I say, well, add this basically at the structure to the build context. Um, uh, yeah, depends on IDE. Yes, um, to do this. Okay, let's try. Um, then this is, is this a file? That is a file. Target cork is app jar. Okay, that's the next problem. I don't know which file. <laughs> Um, does it? Oh, it says coffee shop jar. It doesn't have a. Um, oh no! Wait, it's not this. It's Quarkus app. Quarkus app. Quarkus run. Good. Yes. No. Maybe. Quarkus app. Yes. Jar. That's Quarkus run. Okay. Good. Then it doesn't have a version number. Then I can say at this Quarkus run jar. Okay. That's the second file. That's good. Then I can say. Um, Quarkus, I have no clue whether all of this works, really. Um, coffee shop, same here. Target, coffee shop, target, Quarkus run jar. Okay. <laughs> then, is there something like a with directory? No. 
direct no ah i'm wrong here that's that's it direct no with probably it's also well it's i guess also a file uh, i mean a directory is a file with file from path then i say well the same thing like here i guess corcus app lib app corcus corcus app lib lib um lib app corcus lib app that's that's all interesting okay now if that works okay i i, I don't mean no, no offense but that's never gonna work I, I said this last time. You have this feeling as a as a developer when you know you're like this is never gonna work, and you start it, and you're just like okay, whatever. Um, but this is just gonna blow up in some way, I guess, at the Docker build. But let's see. And I probably also forgot something. I don't know. No, it looks good. New image. Okay. Just target Quarker would do. You can add a whole directory to the context. Yes. That's a good point about the Quarkus app. Um, let's see, because I I think this is done for a reason to not add too much. But yeah, for the Docker, for the development mode, it really doesn't matter. Even if it would add too much, it's like, yeah, that's a good point. But we can do this just for simplicity. Um, yes, especially for the Docker. Uh, that's just a Docker build with adds it to the build context, yeah, I guess. Um, Okay, as we see, it doesn't do anything. Doc Postgres test containers. It also doesn't have, okay, can I have the, doesn't have a lock. It starts it. Do I need something else like build? New image from Docker file. <laughs> Docker file dev. That's interesting. I would, okay, that's the old one. I would like to see some output of my build because I, right now, I don't know whether my, well, there's no container, whether my build failed or whether there's, like, what is happening because the, I have no output from that container, but none at all. Um, it's almost like I, okay, let's stop this. I am calling deep start. There's not something like, um, Consider adding self4j simple or self4j over Java U to log in to get more logs. That's a good point, especially for this system test. I really don't care. Usually I'm not a big log fan person because there are just too many logging frameworks out there. And I try to do system, system out instead. Um, let's do it here. Where's the best way to search for dependencies? Of course, on searchmaven.org. So f for j over no java util login ah bridge to this one this one oh god oh always too many um no that seems to be a different one is it due to no it is the other one it should be Let's see, or Excel for J to Java U to login. So well, it would log the build process if you configure your logger. Test containers use self for J that requires a logger implementation to be provided. Yes, that makes sense. Um, yeah, with self for J, I guess. Uh -huh. let's try this so you see with logging i just like always try and try and make it break and and run <laughs> i think i stopped it mm -hmm. okay let's see 
resolving the dependencies. Yeah, logging also with tests is always a pain. I would no. So still this one, right? Failed to log. I probably need ah, I probably need the software. So that's another thing, right? It doesn't matter how long I am in this industry. Like there are some things you always will have to. Uh, I have to Google software J JDK. That's what I'm doing. Or log for J. No op simple placing one and only one in the class. Oh wait, did it update this already? Yeah, it should. Okay, let's try again. Software J JDK 14. If that use JDK, then it should be fine. I mean, Sulfur J. It should be fine. Binding target Sulfur J API. Well, if test container already has that, then did you reimport? Yes. Ah, probably it didn't. Okay, perfect. Nice. That's what I want. Docker host IP is local host connected to Docker. Yes, that's correct. Checking the system. Uh huh. Interesting. Interesting. Pre pull dependency images. Checking local images for this and this. If not available, it will be pulled. Okay, and now let's see what happens. The interesting thing was that I assumed that it would actually do something because while you do a Docker build, it shows uh, the temp container because all of the other one uh -huh, is starting, is starting. Okay, perfect. Oh, that's also good to know. Um, once we have the dependencies that it actually, you know, started all of them um, in order, but it doesn't do anything for the um, image from Docker file. Let's see. And I'm pretty sure that's, yeah, I know the, so this image is definitely also on my, my machine because it's, I, um, I built that many times. What is it? Adopt. Should be like OpenJDK 14, OpenJ9 or something. Yeah. Hmm. And we don't see nothing. So that would be interesting if there is another way to debug that, especially while while it is building and while we are waiting for it, uh, because. I'm also not thinking if I build this one, it should be correct. The Docker file would not be correct. What I would try next would be to just exclude some paths to make it fail on purpose because then it wouldn't be included in the build context. That would be, if you enable debug trace mode, then it would also lock the pulling. Ah. Is that a test containers thing? Google has the answer for everything. Ah, okay. Probably this one. Oh, now I have Java U to log in, I think it was. Follow self J logger. Somewhere here, containers. BCP proxy. Yeah, debugger is another thing that I will have afterwards, or uh, that I want to do afterwards. Okay, so this doesn't do anything here. No bloggers, yes. That's the second problem uh, I always faced, like, and it doesn't get better even after 10 or 20 years in this industry. You, one is how to add loggers to your um, to your project, and the second is how to configure them, that's even worse. Uh, that would be Java U to log in for this um, thingy here, this package, I suppose. Which here is logback. Logback is recommended. You know what? Then I just add logback test. Should be included in your class path. Logback test. 
Okay, resources, I guess. Meter, resources, meter, resources. No, it should be meter. I always forget which one. That's another thing. Okay. Let's include one here. Uh, log back test. There we go. Standard out. Yep. Test containers. Debug info. Now I need to switch this to log back. No. No. Let's go back to my Maven Central. It was Alpha J something something log back. Alpha J log back. Alpha J log back. This one or this one? Too many. <laughs> okay, let's try with that. Reimport and wait and stop and then let's see if it shows us different or more information. Maybe does the disk containers logback is recommended accessing. Just searching if it says something about how to configure the logger, but I hope guess it was the correct dependency. Okay, let's see. Just logback, not logback test. Ah, there we go. Oh, now we have even nice emojis. That's awesome. Big fan of emojis. So, waiting consumer, standard out. Boop, boop, boop. Can I make this smaller? Yeah. Sorry for all the readers, but I have to make it smaller, otherwise, I can't read it. Um, standard error, okay. Log file start database, okay. Found dependency images. Extract Docker command started. So this was the Postgres. It's good. Extract Docker command debug. It should build. Okay. Found dependency images in Dockerfile. Yeah. Okay, in Dockerfile. Okay, that's good. So this means it could actually access the Dockerfile. This worked because that's a from image. Preemptively checking local images. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Command. Abstract Docker command. Okay, that's cute. And now it says this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now it. I assume that the next step would be to just check for the build context if these files are available, which they should. And nothing is happening. Wait a little bit more. But I imagine that it would be faster because also when, when I build it locally. It should be faster. Also, I hope you're all uh, doing well on this evening or European evening time. Probably last time it was a little bit more fun to watch because more stuff broke. Uh, and now this time it's just like nothing happens and no lock and uh, no output um but let's see well, how we're gonna get there because if this works with uh, this java mode this would be really cool because once we have a running um process in this way uh what we could do is is to have the development mode um that actually uh, connects to the docker container which is being started uh, by test containers which would be a cool uh, technology combination i would say and Sergey says, try trace. Good point. Let's see. That's the cure all for any production problems as well. If there's not enough info, just trace everything and get buried in log files and then see what happens. Trace, trace, trace. Pull image result callback logs the pull process is debug level. GitHub Docker Java. Okay. What did I have before? Did I had info, I think. So then trace should do it as well. Ah, okay. 
Running, running, running. Ah, here. Successfully tagged. Coffee shop latest. Interesting. Okay. And. Successfully it's tagged. Which means it should be there. Okay, wait a second. Step. So this is a super weird looking Docker output. I mean, with all that stuff here. Oh, you know what? There's another nice cure, which everybody who's a Vim person knows that you can actually do a lot of these nice things with Vim. If I say, uh, delete everything, where is it? Okay, now I can not read anything. Sorry for that, but I need to make it smaller. Otherwise, I don't see anything. Response item stream, something like delete until... this yeah it makes it a little bit better so the problem is all of these things you probably uh, see them here that's a docker output and this says copy this copy that they all work so this all looks good and then it says successfully built image at the end what i was reading before somewhere successfully built and tagged image. So this was all correct. The question is why doesn't it start the container? Wiremark, Postgres, test containers. So there was probably something else either wrong or I didn't prop properly set it up. Um, image from Docker file, new generic container. Depends on. Okay. And now that's the coffee shop and the coffee shop should be included with deep start. Otherwise it wouldn't be built. Is there something else I forgot? Let's see, where is my shell script? Create this one. Okay, coffee shop, it needs the network. I was setting that, I was setting the port. This should still work. I also want to set my debug port, but that's a different issue. And that should be it. And it doesn't start. Um, what else I wanted to check? So this is there. Ah, I wanted to check the image, which should be, yeah, exactly. Coffee shop is a great name. As you can see, I did a lot of, lot of testing here. Um, yeah, latest, two minutes ago. And this should be that image, F-E-B-B-F, -B -B -F. yeah. So there is definitely an image, which that's already cool. So I have an image that has been uh, built, uh, docker ps-a, yeah. That's also what I thought, then exited, but it didn't show anything. Uh, the log level for Docker Java is at info. Yeah, you might also try Docker Run Coffee Shop latest to debug the build image. That's a good point. Yes, because Docker uh, Docker PS dash A didn't show anything, so it apparently didn't crash or something. But yes, uh, I can do the Docker Run, which is basically this command, what I was always running myself. Uh, not with the temp builder, but with the coffee shop latest. Coffee shop, if I can type. No, 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 stop. Coffee shop, yes. Latest. Coffee shop, <laughs> yes. Not as demon. Go. And now, because the others are already or still running, and it doesn't do anything. Oh, it, no, it should. It works. It probably now doesn't have the database anymore. I think the other one already stopped or something like that, but it would, at least it should stop and crash. Failed to index Boolean class does not exist in class loader. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's bad. Oh, maybe something went wrong when I, I rebuilt my application using this and I added all of the Oh, okay, what I'm guessing, I had this issue sometimes with Docker. Um, I'm guessing that not all of the paths are correct because I'm not sure if this one worked and then if the Docker file runs with the current build context, I'm not sure if it copied the ones correctly. So I, I always had this issue that I really have to pay attention if it's a directory and how it's gonna be added here, if this exists or not. And that's my guess. Uh, how we can 
do this is basically say run not this but bin bash or something like that with uh, dash ti and it doesn't have bash that run bone shell okay now i'm in this container and um i would just tr check out what it's actually here deployments yes deployments app lip is that correct app lip quirkus uh, yeah maybe Okay, let's compare because the structure here is always important. Quark is up, deployments, lib, yeah, that looks good. And then I can compare it to coffee shop testing, testing, coffee. So that's, um, I ran into this issue many, many times with, with Docker just in general. If you build it and then your um, supposed structure looks a little bit different. Target. Okay, Quark is up. Okay. So if I say app here, there's a coffee shop. Yeah, that was correct. If I say lip, there is boot deployment main. In boot, there is all kinds of stuff. Boot, well, I guess all kinds of stuff. Yeah, looks good. Yes, looks good. Um, then quirk is three. Not look quirk is. Yes, looks good. And my quirk is run. Like here. So this looks correct. And then what it does, it runs deployments. In deployments, I have the quirk is run, which before was in quirk is app jar. Quirk is run, quirk is run, yes, correct. And java dash jar, quirk is run which is this one, which should be correct as well. So the structure looks good so far. It looks like, and this is also recent, uh, yeah. It looks like all of that was added. That's already on. Let's see. What I will do, I will rebuild the whole thing again. And then it has to be a new file. And then just to be sure that this is not the issue. So I have to build it in the same way, like with this mutable uh, jar this quirk is packaging type, and then I expect that the um, structure looks, I'm now thinking whether I got everything right. And um, yeah, I think with deep start, you aren't getting the exception right away. It doesn't fail fast, but it waits for all futures, okay? Just to debug, try moving coffee shop from deep start after to after join and call coffee shop start blocking to get the error. That's a good point, yeah. Also good to know, ah, fail to index boolean. Cluster does fail to index boolean cluster not exist in class level. Did I get this error before? I guess no. Let's just ignore it for now. <laughs> um, what I can do, yes, to debug I can do that. That's a good point. And I can, if I start it manually, uh, just see move it after. Try moving from after join and call to get the error. Yeah, exactly. Uh, coffee shop start um, if that doesn't work then the other thing what i will do yes please stop and rerun um, that i run only these two the coffee the database and the barista and then i started myself manually again and trying to see whether this works because this then also should work or let's see okay debug blah 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 database system database is ready Debug. God, this is so big. I'm also really a person who likes small fonts. So the thing is with uh, with the computer resolution, I have no issue if it's like a font like this. Um, I can just like, you know, read it. But if it's too big and I don't see stuff, that's, uh, that's more annoying to me. But then I know you can't read it, so <laughs> I won't do that. Um, okay, successfully tagged. It still doesn't do work output let's see it interesting successfully tagged so what I did what I also will do right now let's check this first um, to only start the coffee shop because then 
it, it will fail anyway, but I then I see the other error. Oh, here we go. Moving image. Oh, okay. Stop everything and then say only start the coffee shop and then I see what this does because then I expect a failure at start time because it ha doesn't have the database and the other thing and now it should blah 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 build my container and then something needs to happen response stream yes yes running running tagged no tension drum roll and we don't see anything disable line wrapping in idea log helps yes but then i is it no soft wrap that's what i'm doing ah yes but then i don't see this <laughs> uh, no actually it's easier to me Tagged. okay now it doesn't start it up I don't quite know why and we probably also don't s ah wait a second oh it has the de start with start the dependencies yes okay so it does start the dependencies okay good point um, yes okay well I can remove the dependencies for now just to have uh, a clearer picture and say um, I don't care about the dependencies right now uh, because it would fail anyway and then I would see whether this whole thing uh, works with hmm. copy copy command no this all looks good to me Oh, there we go. But that's only yeah, that's only the watermark. Nope, doesn't start. Could you please debug a thing for me? Exact extract new image from Docker file into an object and get get on it. It should return an image ID. I get the feeling that does not release the image poke command. Oh, okay. Oh, so that it still blocks maybe yeah that could be because the image is there and that's a new image but it's a good point yeah um, that's also a thing I I often do just to be step by step to do these things separately and uh, image static well whatever uh, image get what does it do it probably does it block oh future okay whatever um it's the string docker image but there is no not like build execute do whatever is okay no okay let's try static what does then that's also another question when does it actually build the image is it on the container startup time or once I define the the image um, type? Ah, I really can't deal with two big fonts. Doesn't matter if it's wrapped or not. <laughs> I'll tell you if I see something. Um, ah, okay. It seems like there's no output here. Um, again it didn't actually output something get a feeling that docker for some yeah release the image build so ah yeah no so i just printed something to see uh this is the first one then it immediately builds the image this makes sense and there is nothing successfully tagged okay interesting that's a good 
Another question to you, Sergey. So it does build the image. That's good. It successfully builds the image also for Docker. Uh, another thing that I could actually see is to test whether the image itself worked. I assume so. Um, especially once I, st once I start the other um, Docker containers with, uh, with test containers. 20 seconds ago, latest. Yeah, definitely. That is there. And now if I say, well, just for the fun of it, Docker run, latest, nutshell. Uh, run, run, run. This should start the Quarkus application and fail because the database is not there. Yes. Yes, connection refused to coffee something. Yeah, that's the database. Okay, so the image works. There is no um, calls get on the image when it starts the container. Okay, so generic container calls get, yes, and get does not return. So that's the interesting thing because uh, here we don't get the other output. So for some reason, it kind of finishes building the image, but then something inside blocks. Hey, Spencer, super cool that you can join my stream. Yeah, thanks. Uh, doing well, doing well. Just fighting with not really with docker i would say fighting with docker java because docker behaves properly the docker java is my uh, issue and that's actually one of the reasons why i typically basically tell folks to use docker right away you know like this uh because well it's also me because then i, I know more easily how to debug it um but in this way it would be interesting where actually the issue lies if it's a question of test containers running uh, or controlling the Docker Java API or Docker Java itself um, to say I have an image from DockerFest that actually does a test container uh, thing to say, why is it not built? I mean, it is built. Why is it not like released? How does the threat dump look? Good question. How does the threat dump? Let's see. Um, I starting no stop and rerun oh god now you now you're asking me for stuff um this one i guess uh what was it not kill nine i think dash three is it yes no maybe to have a threat dump i think so yeah processing dump um Oh God, where was it? Coffee testing. Ah, here it is. So this looks, I think, a little bit different than most because I'm running OpenJ9. Um, I think the name was Threats. Yes, uh, Threats com subcomponent. And then I expect something like, well, let's step through. What do we have here? Test containers. That's uh, waiting on object wait. Object wait is always good. GC slave, watchdog. Also, I have literally no idea what I'm what I'm looking at. Um, object weight, but all of the object weights sounds good to me. I sometimes do this when I look at Project Reaper. When I look at some enterprise uh, systems, when they are blocked on some um, on some HTTP synchronous request, concurrent no worker no Should, looks fine to me. Duct tape, <laughs> lock support, park nanos. Profiler, diagnostic, native thread, monitor control. Probably have something to search for, but I'm. I like to step it uh, through step by step to see that I'm not missing anything. Object wait. Ah. Piped input stream. Test containers. Tar copy. This looks better. Ah. Image from Docker file resolve. Okay get yes there we go so to your answer this is what this uh, this is the um threat dump for the thing that i'm looking for so what does it do put output stream zip something write block maybe flush transfer to drastic dude <laughs> Oh, an idea, there is a button for it, really. Okay, interesting. Just press the camera button in idea. 
Near the stop button. Ah, there we go. Cool. Probably does the same thing, yeah. Okay. Interesting to know. Uh, yeah, I typically search for the process ID either uh, with JPS or with Linux. I'm more a Linux uh, person, as you folks uh, probably seen. Uh, and then dash uh, kill with dash three. What is it? Six, six stop, six something. Um, signal does the same. And uh, just this is how it looks in uh, with OpenJ9. So basically, transfer to copy right. So it looks like it has some issues with that. I also don't know what it does here because it looks to me like it's uh, copying some like it's copying the contents of the image which it actually doesn't have to do i mean it just has to build it and then re uh, refer to the image using the image id if i understand it correctly i mean i have no clue what uh what test containers or docker java does under the hood uh because it says like transfer to refer well we can actually look into it Image from Docker file resolve. Image from Docker file one thirty. Image from that's what I that's what I would do. No, oh God, not correct anymore. One thirty. Transfer to method. Sorry, I have to make it a little bit smaller. Otherwise, I don't see anything. Resolve. Okay. DS pipes. Blah 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 blah. To build an image, we have to send it. Ah, ah, context. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But I already did send the context. That's interesting because the context was, it was built correctly. I mean, the context obviously was there and then says transfer to. That's interesting. Oh, wait, image ID. Really? I would have expected that it's blocked somewhere here, right? Because if I say the build context has been sent, the image actually has been built and it is there. And it's just for some reason not returning. Um, that's embarrassing. It looks like Docker no longer closes the input stream when the build is done. Probably related to the latest LDAX improvements. I'm surprised that I tested now catch it. Yan is now how the Russians say. Um, I would actually, that's a good point. If that doesn't work or doesn't work anymore, what I would uh, try is to wrap. Uh, is to use an older version of Docker Java and or test containers and uh, try with that if it's a uh, it's a stream. Which one do you say? The input stream. Where's the input stream? Because the output stream that's a try and catch that's closed. Input stream, this one. What I add cleanup is. Um, piped input stream from out and that's the output stream of uh, well, it depends. I don't know how that all works, but in this case, if that's going to be cascaded with a close, then it would be closed um, to your point. But that's a good question, especially why this one is uh, just blocking here. This is what I quite don't get. And I also don't get what the whole thing is doing there in general, because it should not um, care about the build context anymore, because the image is already built. Transfer to input stream, right? Utils, huh? maybe right. Okay, this is our new transfer based on HTTP client five. The will request of HTTP something that we hardly can control. I don't know. Let's see. Um, what I would do is just to try to rewind a version of test containers, uh, maybe one that. So Sergey, if you have an old, if you know which uh, version like had this change, maybe then I would try another one before. Uh, but that's an interesting thing in general, right? Because that would mean that using this approach, it doesn't work to build an image in general. Um, so one, I'm always thinking about how I debug uh, situations. One thing that I would try out is try out a, diff, uh, a sim simpler example to say, build a super simple Hello World image uh, with test containers and try to build that. I think I'm... Um, I'm doing that just in case, make sure on your test containers 15.2. It's also a question, test containers 15.2. Yes, I am. Um, other than that, I would uh, try to f uh, build up an easier uh, reproducer and then let's take it from there. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's already pretty cool that we can build a Docker image uh, here with, uh, with test containers. It seems to have some issue, but I'm pretty sure we can figure that out. 
I try the HTTP client 5, see above. How can I try this? Um, this is only transport based on HTTP client 5, yes. But the question is how do I control that or set it? Because I don't uh, include any of that. What I do is it pom? Let's see this one. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does it include Docker Java? No, it doesn't. Okay, anyway. No, what I would do in such situations, I would actually uh, try to copy this, this containers, um, Docker, Dockers, whatever, and come up with a simpler solution just to say something like, um, whatever, coffee shop, and then Docker file hello, I'll call it just hello, and get rid of all of that stuff, and say, okay, image, great, and then image get, and try this with a super simple approach, um, just to make sure that, I don't know, the whole thing works in general. I like these approaches, so I see where where the issue lies, or if it's if the issue is me. Uh, Docker file, hello. So something super super simple like um, I know I have a Debian like something like this here on my machine, and then well, basically don't do anything. I don't know. Command Azure. Echo hello world. And that's it. And then start without the network or anything. Log consumer, that's nice. Okay, let's try this. What he's building, yeah, that's a good question. What am I even doing? Um, so what I'm building is I'm basically building um, a test containers approach for what my coffee shop project does here. Um, I'm setting up a local test environment um, of my application. I have a coffee shop application and um, a backend that it uses as a dependency and a database. And um, the this already works. We we hacked this together last time. So I uh, in the beginning I used Bash scripts. Now I changed it to use test containers, the Java API, not the test per se, but the standalone API. I run it as a standalone process, and um, now I want to change it also in a way that I can build my application image on the fly with this Quarkus approach that I have the um, remote dev. Uh, approach running in a Docker container. So that's what I'm building. <laughs> and let's see. Aha. Uh -huh. Container hello latest started. Okay, one second. Where is my output? Way too big. So in the beginning I had some God lines where it was here and where's the end? No, maybe. Container hello started. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay, so this worked. It's at successfully tagged hello latest, and here it says hello. So this works. That's already good. So good for Docker and test containers. It's not completely broken. I can start a hello, and then it's. I don't know what it does. Why is, it, why is it still running? Well, probably it's not. Ah, here, hello world. That's the output. Yeah, perfect. Um, so this works. That's good. That means I can build a super simple image with a Docker file. So next step. Can I add a file? Like, I don't know, this one. Doesn't matter. Um, so I like to, you know, always try to try to do these steps really in a reproducible way uh, to be it, make it super simple here. Target, Quarkus app, Quarkus run. Yeah, from coffee shop, target, Quarkus app, Quarkus run, whatever. It doesn't matter. I can say just add it to Quarkus run. This is the build. Uh, no, without. This is going to be the build context. Now, uh, what I want to do is basically say during the build, um, copy this. Uh, Quarkus run.jar 
to whatever slash and then say bin echo instead of echo just say uh, ls dash and then it should show me the jar right because then i tested that i could add a jar to the build context i tested that i could add the jar to the docker image and then it should work crazy let's see way cool yeah i don't know it doesn't work yet but it might be cool on the left side there's a button to disable the line wrapping it really helps reading okay okay whatever yes it does you're right could not build image okay that's good finally i see an uh, error stat no such file or directory that's not correct there is a file or directories right here you're a liar coffee shop target cork is up cork is run And I add it as a file. Yes, no, maybe. Coffee shop target, cork is up, cork is run. There it is. Ah, cork is up, yes. Coffee shop. Come on, I'm not, I'm not stupid. I know it is here. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Or this, it could be that this execution is actually wrong. But why didn't it fail in the other process then? That's what is confusing. So if I say, please add this file, quark is run, that should be in the current build context, right? So it should end up here. That's my assumption. And I want to get it from this path, which is in my directory. <laughs> so another test container question. How can I make this properly so it works with file from class path no i want file from path or file from file system with file from file file system file i can do this because then i can check that the file is actually correct um file from path or file from file i don't care about the node yeah it should be this to file <laughs> and bonus points if I just lock the whole thing file file to file uh, file system out file to absolute absolute no path real path real absolute path absolute there we go and let's try out this and see whether this works in while well, try the name twice in the path in the first argument because one is how it's added in the build context the build context is how the docker um, builds it all together so it will end up basically here and that is going to be built in a somewhat remote way if i understand it correctly and this uh, second is actually where it gets the file from which is on my file system so i'm basically not unlike docker build i don't do it locally completely i take the file i push it to my docker daemon which is kind of like a remote build process, I guess, uh, understanding correctly. Um, and that that's why it's it's twice here. Unable to delete image, hello, no such image, hello, whatever. Where is the issue? Where does it even start? Oh, okay, first place. Yeah, should be fine. I mean, the dot, but the shouldn't make any problem we can leave it out but it should be fine okay and could not build image copy failed because probably yeah like before no such file or directory docker builder quark is run jar so that could also be the case that something is wrong with copy failed yes i got it so before it should hopefully probably debug where it that it uses my file and copies it to the build process a context right no yes, no maybe um mm -hmm. uh, what's that jar no it doesn't it's only showing the error Work is run. OK. 
Okay, let's try this again with the other path. Double dot from path, or maybe. Well, that's definitely the correct path. Oh, you mean double dot for which one for this one? Well, it the path is incorrect, really. Like this. But it's 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 not a fast I mean it's not a class path, it's a file system path, right? I don't think that this will I would like to, can I somehow debug the build context? Because found dependency, blah, 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 blah. Post containers. I want to know how it actually looks like. Can I? Docker version, Docker environment, hello. Image from Docker file, preempt check in local images, Debian, get, path. Oh, double dot, not colon. <laughs> Sorry. But no, I am really. I thought I'm in the correct directory. Coffee testing, coffee shop. This should be correct. Because coffee testing is project. Because it is so, it is executing the whole thing in the coffee testing. I mean, I can try, but it's. I thought this is the correct uh, path because basically, if I take this image uh, or this file, and if I say, huh, yeah, well, with the colon, without the colon, it works. So this should be the correct path. What I had before, um, because so. Yeah, no, because coffee testing that then goes to a different directory. So I'm pretty sure it, it uh, was like that before because it's um, like that would be the correct one. Um, because so that's the name of the directory that is correct. But apparently, like here, um, for some reason, it doesn't take this file and it could also be that this notation is incorrect, that this doesn't um, correspond to what I have in my build context. So I thought that, I don't know, get a file to the tarball, copy it in the container, path, into the uh, build container probably, right? Build context with file from transferable. And the path is this one, mountable file for host path. Yeah, that makes sense. That all makes sense. Does it do null mode? Okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. And try with file from path dot file. But the image should run from inside the image, not your local file system, right? Um, image should run from inside the image. So, oh, the jar should run from inside the image. Yes, um, but not this one. I actually need to to add more. Um, yeah, that's why I am um, added. So it it will add it to the builder image, and then the builder context image will copy it to the resulting image because that's first of all just the builder, the Docker file. So this is why it ends up here in the. Uh, build context and then it should work to um, have it there. Uh, try file from path dot 
well dot file file from with file from path like this but I could do you mean that but what does let's see with dot okay oh that it just adds it okay I see that it doesn't change Switch file directory. So now I did two two things. Uh, first, I tried it with the. So that makes sense. To just see if it doesn't change the, Quarkus run. No. I would like to. I removed Quarkus up jar. Yeah, well, I did. Uh, I did two things. Now I without and with and without. Um, and the path should be correct. I mean, I can try this, but this should still be correct. So what I would like to see is how my build context looks like, um, basically in general, like when it's building, because then, yeah, no such image, copy failed, yes. Interesting. Uh, because then I could see like the whole path. So this is always the problem there do you have a possibility to say like image dot I don't know get build arcs get transferables ah maybe dependency image names docker file get build arcs probably not super interesting but who knows transferables should be the things I put to my docker oh yeah well okay dot is mountable file let's debug hello debug 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 this okay, inspect the build context by adding run no I can't because the build context is run. If I say run um, ls uh, in my Docker file, it shows me the, the file system of the Docker image, not the build context of the Docker build process, right? Because the build context would be what I have locally in my uh, file system usually, which I then need to copy to the image. But if I don't copy, uh, like before I copy it here, I don't see it here because that's what I uh, did well in a command, but in the run, it would be the same. It would show the, the file system, right? Um, here image get transferables blah 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 mountable file yeah that's the file quark is app quark is run it even shows the whole path i mean that needs to be correct docker file is docker file hello okay no that looks all good to me um let's try with five on path quark is app slash but Oh yeah, then it adds it to the core. Yeah, that might work. Quarkus app slash, and then I could add everything for Quarkus app, and then I can say, please use this to uh, Quark. Oh God, Quarkus app slash. Right? That should. That might might be another thing. No such file. Can you CD in that folder? No, I. Oh, I can. That's a good point. I can CD in that folder because it builds it somewhere here as a temp. Yeah. If it doesn't delete it, I should be able to. 
actually be nice. I'm allowed to do everything here. So no such file. We'll probably delete it again. And it's a different one, right? Yeah. Hmm. And it doesn't stop the process. Interesting. Oh, okay. So it says copy failed. And now I think I have a similar problem like before that it doesn't finish for some reason. So it's also kind of stuck here. If, uh, okay, perform cleanup. Unable to delete image. Well, here it makes sense, no such image. But why was it stuck? Interesting. Copy dot run uh, ls la yeah that would that would do it yes. First I'm also kind of interesting why this doesn't work. Ah, was it was it that? No, that was a different one. Probably was deleted again. Um. Okay, let's try this again and I run it again and I try to run this fast enough here. So, where is my, ah, there we go. Docker built, that is the coffee shop. Deployment target. So that was now a trick. I, I was in a different, um, here with, uh, with a sudo user. And I was just printing everything with a tree. It doesn't show uh, the whole hierarchy, but enough to now understand. So good tip um, in the chat to now understand why this is so apparently it adds. That doesn't make sense. It adds the whole coffee shop environment. It adds the. Why? I mean, this is cool because then I say, interesting. If that is the case, I can simply say uh, coffee shop target cork is app cork is run, right? And I forgot about that. I don't know why this doesn't work, but if that is the case that it adds everything in my, I don't get it. Why this is the case. But whatever, I mean, if, if that works. I really don't get it. Okay. Transfer zero bytes. Oh, boom. Ah. Interesting. Okay. So that is, it's getting, it's getting more and more weird. Uh, <laughs> container could be started. So first of all, I want to see. Oh yeah, wrap. No, yes, yeah. First of all, I want to see the copy command. The succeeding. Um, here we go. Successfully built label whatever. Where is it? Copy, copy, copy here. So the copying worked because for some reason my whole coffee shop directory was part of my build context. I don't know why. Okay, um, so this worked. And then what else do we have here? I already forgot. Well, we say ls only in the command. We say, okay, please print everything. And then it has the app. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Funny. Okay, so in this case, just to make it work for the other example, that would mean that we basically don't have to add anything here. And we just say um, include the Docker file from coffee shop something like this 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 and that's it and ignore all of that crap and start it's never gonna work okay let's see just do copy dot yes 
you were right. <laughs> that would have also showed me the build context. You're absolutely right. But my question remains, why is it the yeah, copy fails, whatever. Why is it the case that here, well probably here is not the case anymore. <laughs> no such file or directory. Copy shop. Docker build or copy shop target core because Oh yes, I th think I know why. No, I don't. Because Coffee shop target. Did I did I clean the whole thing? No, it should be still there. Coffee shop target cork is up. Okay, let's try this again. Um, if that doesn't show me the trick, then I will finally do your copy. And <laughs> there we go. Oh, this oh, damn, I deleted it. But I um, this was the other one. Did you see? It added a different directory. It gets weirder and weirder. Um, probably because of the Docker file and then coffee shop shows me the different. Okay, now I have one last attempt of trying it before I actually look into it. Um, this might be it without adding the files. If that is, it showed me the deployment one here. So I guess for some reason, magically, if I add the Docker file, it adds the whole directory of that file, which was different for the other one. Yeah. Let's see. Crazy. Wow, we're already doing this for one and a half hours. And yeah, that's also how you can spend an evening. <laughs> But this actually looks good to me. Bin bash, not bin bash. Not ah, there we go. Cool. Could start. No database. Yes, I know. That's on purpose. And it looks good. And it could start the coffee shop container. Nice. Okay. So a lot of homework to you, Sergey. Um, why this doesn't work and how can I make it work at it, adding it some some additional files. So my assumption is, I obviously don't know. My assumption is if I add a Docker file here, it seems to add the whole directory of that file as a base root um, co build context, which is cool here because then I can, you know, just ignore all of that and just uh, refer it in, not this one, refer it in my Docker file. But I would be interested how to add files in general to my build context. Uh, that's one thing and what the syntax looks like. And now I want to add the other ones here. Yes, and then I can say coffee shop, let's start as well. And then hopefully, where's my depends on all of that? No. Um, one second image, yes, inline, get rid of that, get rid of that, and it depends on, yes, no, maybe, no, um, yeah, there we go, okay, sorry, I should in increase the font size for you, so that's the last attempt for today, I would say. Docker change the behavior again. <laughs> Isn't it fun? Isn't IT fun? <laughs> um, I had the same thing with Docker Java. It was not, I'm not blaming test containers this time. It was something else with Docker Java, which is why I used, stopped using it. I think it was connected to the Maven build. I, at one point, which I also don't do anymore, uh, was building Docker images with a Maven build. And for the same reason, I think it was a Docker Java inconsistency, it failed. And wait a sec, why it doesn't connect refused? Why you should wait for the database? Okay, that's another issue. Or maybe that's the database. Uh, maybe I don't know. It's just a, it's just a log. It could be something else. Um, and this is why I stopped uh, using Docker Java uh, for other reasons. So yes, I'm not the biggest fan of that for a bunch of reasons. Curl, localhost. No. Bam, exception. Failed to start Quarkus. 
we're almost there. But I think at some point it's going to be dinner time. Um, okay, connection refused. Oh, okay. I apologize. That's my uh, that was my mistake. Why? Before it worked because we started Quarkus in the proper way, in the production way. Now we're starting it in a development mode. And now I, because of other reasons to start it locally, um, it actually did not, um, uh, it did not uh, use this path, but the other one, the local host, which is fine for really local, but this is now remote local or whatever, but it's development mode. This is why it uses the other, um, other uh, the other behavior, the other, properties um, let me rebuild this so we will find a better process for that but I just want to do it one last time to see whether it's working because now this is not a I'm pretty sure this is not a test containers issue that's now a my app issue that it was actually reconfigured uh, but I take all kinds of feedback you know I'm not the maintainer of docker job yeah 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 I know this was not no no offense I mean I I, I know you were um, we are in the same uh, on the same team. Um, I know, and I know Docker Java is making all kinds of issues, and I'm not complaining towards you. It's more like I'm telling that story. Um, and obviously, if uh, you would be the maintainer, you would make sure that it works together with test containers and not just fail it, right? Um, yeah, that's an issue that we have to figure out for that uh, adding files. But at least this thing thing what I'm Building here worked, and if we're lucky with all of that stuff, can actually look at. Yeah, this looks good to me. Well, there we go. Post. Nice. And yeah, this is also normal. Don't worry about these exceptions. This is trying to access the barista, but it's not set up yet. Why? Because I have to use the um, coffee test again and I have to configure the barista wiremark system which the test does which my command line doesn't and last thing for today I want a green test yes nice okay so uh, this seems to be really cool and now what we can do next time um, we can actually connect now the remote development mode this is why we did the whole fun here basically that line uh, for well if I feel if I feel brave enough, I actually can try it out right now. It should work because it's actually this should be coffee shop. Yes, because it's actually using localhost 8001. It should be the running application. Let me uh, Docker log this. Yeah, that's normal. I don't care. And if that connects, that would actually be the connection to remote. Um, yeah, connected to remote server. Wow. If this works, Barista failed to respond, that's fine. If this works, then I would be able to, now that's the really last test for today, I would be able to look at this response and now change the response in my source code. This would now really be cool. Let's try this out. I really hope this works. To, to give you a nice good night, uh, nice experience. So now it's reloading it. It actually has the connection to the source code and Boom, there we go, that's awesome. Do you see what I did? I just changed the source code and it now, because of the remote dev mode, has the connection to my running application that runs in a Docker container that has been started with test containers and it works. Nice, awesome. I like when a plan comes together and especially after one and a half hours of trying out stuff, it now works to start that Docker container and to connect the remote development mode uh, towards that to be able to change the source code and see the change immediately being reflected without needing to restart the whole thing. This is what I wanted. Awesome. I'm super happy that this now works. And yeah, great. Wow. Um, so we learned all kinds of stuff related to test containers. Uh, Sergey, uh, thanks a lot for, uh, for joining and especially for giving all kinds of uh, helpful feedback. I hope we can figure this out uh, in the future, how to work uh, with these files individually. They uh, that would also be good to know uh, how to build them up uh, uh, basically uh, spontaneously in this uh, in this syntax. And yeah, so that was, was an interesting coding session. Um,
anything else you folks uh, want to know from today's coding session, like any other uh, shortcuts or tricks that we, we used or, or whatever, but I'm, um, yeah, I'm super happy already how, how this came together and how this worked. Yeah, so thanks a lot for all your uh, support in the chat. Um, maybe we can also at some point have this in another format that we can bring uh, Sergey or somebody else uh, up uh, up on stage. And yeah, definitely once that is working, I'll uh, put together a blog post or something like that. But this is really cool because then we can have an independent process of starting our containers with a test containers with a Java API and uh, define all of these dependencies and stuff like that. And um, yeah, then we have our app running in a remote development mode um, with so the hot reload is already working. Next step would be to get the de debug working, but I think it's it's probably already working. We just have to uh, map the port correctly and that's pretty much it. So yeah, thanks a lot again for uh, for joining us today. If you have some other feedback, just uh, let me know on Twitter or put it into the chat. And um, yeah, for everybody, uh, thanks a lot for joining and have a have a great evening. Thank you and bye-bye.